today there is no reverence. Oh, what little there is, is just very little. What? You see, people laugh at what's called Christianity. What's going to happen to that man? When God sends something to the earth and the seed being operated just exactly the word, and then man talk about it and make fun of it, you know the Bible said, Jesus said it's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and will never be forgiven. Oh, they say that's of the devil. Be careful what you say, brother, sister. Be careful what you say, sinner. There is no forgiveness for it. Jesus said to speak a word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Look, what he just got done through doing, discerning, telling them the thoughts that was in their heart. And they said, he's a Beelzebub, calling the spirit of God an unclean spirit, a devil doing the work of God. And he said, I'll forgive you. The atonement wasn't made at that time, but, and Jesus hadn't died, but said, when the Holy Ghost has come to speak again is that, it will never be forgiven you. When the Holy Spirit comes to do the same work that he was doing then, it will never be forgiven. Irreverent people, what can we expect by judgment? This nation that stand on God, this nation has many Billy Grahams and Roberts that's blasted across this country and other great soldiers of the cross that went through this country preaching the gospel and it's on the rampage every year. Sin keeps multiplying. Was the great evangelist Billy Graham said the other day in one of his meetings when he went to New York, he said he believed New York had increased many percent in sin since his revel there. said when he was here in Los California, Los Angeles, he said in 10 or 15 years from now that every citizen will have to pack a pistol or something to protect himself. They can't get enough law enforcement. Sin is on such a rampage. Oh, what it is. Is it? It's irreverence to the Bible. They've turned down their chance. They've blasphemed and made fun of it. That's right. Now, let's bring it down a little closer to home. Look at the churches, what they've done. Many of them going across the country. When you get a man with enough of, with enough of real power of God about him to tell the people about their sinful ways, get somebody who will tell them they got to be born again, not shake hands or come up and make a decision. They've got to be born again, not putting your name on a book or joining church or shaking hands or any sprinkling or some baptism, but to be born of the Spirit of God, separated God's life living in you, showing itself through, not just today, tomorrow, but the rest of your days. With joy in your trials and tribulations, you would move on, knowing that the road is open before you to glory. That's a kind of a gospel. When you find them like that, you preach it and come back next year. They are, they, they are the same, the same thing, only worse, and more of it and more of it. The more you preach against it, the worse it gets. What is it? It's irreverence. And then 95 percent of those people go to church, have their name on their book, claim to be Christians, man, claim to be Christians that smoke and drink and gamble and tell dirty jokes, many deacons on the board with one, two, and three and four wives, that's true, what a disgrace, women sing in the choir with bobbed hair, the Bible said she's an honorable person, paint on their face, there was only one woman ever painted her face in the Bible, that was Jezebel. God fed her to the dogs. So you see what he thinks about it. And then you come tell them about it next year. Come back and they are worse than they was in the first place. Irreverent. They have no respect, no thoughts of decency. Let me tell you something, women, young women and old to go out here with these dresses on, these little old tight clothes and shorts. You say, you aren't to be talking like that, Brother Branham. I should. That's my duty. This is a, this is a pulpit.